Oh, that was a bit playful, wasn't it? This is meant to be a luxury cruiser, not a bruiser. I want to show you something. So if I just take that banana off. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a fuel economy challenge for, or stash MPG test with our Volvo S80 V8. What a surprise, what a shock. If you are new around here, then you may not be familiar that I do love fuel economy and MPG. Um, so yeah, it was only inevitable I was gonna do it with the Volvo S80 V8 as well. I've done this test with my Porsche Cayenne, which went like this. 14.87 miles per gallon, wow! And I also do it with my Mercedes C63 AMG, which went like this. It was 17.1 miles per gallon. And I think that's brilliant. So it was only inevitable that I was going to do it with the Volvo S80 V8 as well. And I'm, I'm gonna be doing the exact same trip as I did the previous two times. So everything's gonna be the same, nothing's gonna be um, unfair, everything's going to be exactly the same, same driving style, same route, same everything. Uh, so yeah, all we need to do now is get in the petrol station here and fill up and find one that is worthy of me filling up at. Um, I'm going to go behind the Peugeot 106 because it's more nostalgic. Although there, there is a Mustang right there, 5 litre one, very nice. Right everyone, uh, I have now just filled up and we need to reset the computer before we embark our journey. So come down here, you just need to scroll it like so and the uh, instruments on the displays should give you the MPG reading. There it is, 17.8 miles per gallon. That was all done, apart from a few hundred miles for myself, That all those 92,000 miles was one owner and that was his average, around 18 miles per gallon when I picked it up. So I'm not going to reset it and this is going to be my MPG from now on. So if we just press the reset button here, hold it, there we go, that's it. We now, this is now my MPG and this is going to be my journey and this will display what MPG we get. Excuse me for interrupting myself, but yesterday I made a catastrophic blunder and I forgot to reset the trip computer before um, setting off for my journey. And halfway through I realized that and I thought, you know what, I'll just scrap it and then we'll begin and start again tomorrow. Uh, so I filled up again, uh, so we have a fresh fuel tank. It's about, it would cost me like five quid, only a couple of, or three liters were used or something like that. So yeah, uh, just to make sure everything's just like perfect. So I wanted to just do it all over again, so. Yeah, so here we are, and that explains why the times are different on my um, dials. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, we reset the computer, which you do down here, and hold the T1, T2 button, which we have clearly demonstrated here. And our MPG average has been reset using this scrolly wheel. Hold down the reset button, and then it will reset the MPG average, which we've already done. So now we're just ready to go. Before we go, I didn't realize this, but you don't actually need the key in the slot. You can actually have it down here and press the start button without the key. One of, uh, someone commented on one of my videos about that, so thank you very much for letting me know about that. It's quite a neat feature. I always had the impression you had to have, to have the key in the slots. But anyway, let's uh, get on, let's go. So how is this gonna work if you haven't watched my Porsche or C63 video of the MPG test? So we're gonna do um, a bit of mixed driving. We're gonna start off doing a bit of town driving. I, might have to go to, I need to go to the supermarket and collect some essentials. So normal duties will presume as normal. Uh, then I'm gonna go on some like country B roads and then I'm gonna go on some more straighter roads and I'm gonna go on the motorway and then we'll go back to the petrol station fill up and gather our results, do all the maths and calculations, and then we'll have our result from there. So right now we are in town and luckily enough, it's sunny compared to yesterday. Yesterday was wet and windy, which was really perilous for me because my window kept steaming up on the inside, which is very annoying because my aircon's kind of broken. I don't want to use it. I want to get it fixed. So thankfully today is a rather sunny, cloudy day, um, which is good. Right now we're driving the S80 through town and it's, it's so easy to live with. The gearbox is buttery smooth, it's really easy to use, it's, and it gets through gears easy, it's not jerky, it's just really lazy and just nice. The steering is really light as well. Um, you can actually change in the settings how 
how heavy and how light you want it and someone commented on my video so thank you very much for that because I was complaining how numb it is and I can make it heavier this is in the medium setting and it feels light so I can't imagine what the lightest setting feels like I need to have a play around with that another observation I've had is driving this car through town is just easier than I thought it would be because I checked the dimensions of this car and apparently it is wider and longer than the Porsche Cayenne Turbo I had which is ridiculous for something is a saloon car I didn't it doesn't look or feel it's not imposing or scary to drive through a narrow town like I'm in right now it's very narrow and I do look around to see my surroundings to check if I'm near things but I don't feel like I'm doing it as much in this car as it was with the Porsche Cayenne. I think it's just a psychological thing because you associate an SUV to be something very big and hard to drive through town. But right now I am in the supermarket and I am going to park up in one of these really small spaces. So it's going to be a test to see how hard it is to drive or to park rather in these really narrow spaces. Mm, I think we're a bit wonky. Gonna pull it back out. Oh no, it was actually perfect. That was perfect first time. Nice! Come on, Marcus, just do your thing. Be for me. I shan't dare to go any further than that. That would do for me. Right, I am now going to get going to get some essentials and then we will pick up the video from there. Nice. Got my essentials, got my shower gel, my bananas. Speaking of bananas, I got I got I want to show you something. So if I just take that banana off, I've got a present for Christmas and it's uh, a banana box it's quite a good invention you basically put the banana inside and then you close the box that way when you are in a I don't know if you got your banana in a lunch box or anything you won't get bashed around and bruised look at that all secure I can now mm, punch the banana it'd be fine but anyway onwards okay guys we've now completed the town journey that's now out of the way um, so far we've averaged Oh, it's going down as we speak because I'm accelerating, but we have, it was 16 miles per gallon, which doesn't sound particularly um, impressive, but there was a lot of start-stop and I was dawdling. Maybe it might start to increase as we have more consistent driving, apart from when I do go around some bends and give it some beans. So everyone, what do you reckon we'll get in terms of MPG? There are reasons I believe it won't be as good as I think it will be, but I'll explain that in a minute. But I'm going to guess, hmm, 20 miles per gallon. But there are things I think which will go against this car, which could possibly make it lower, which I'll explain now. So in my C63 test I did uh, many months ago, I think I got around 17 miles per gallon. That car is lighter than this. It also has more power. It's more aerodynamic. It's got an extra gear. Um, it's got more torque as well. So in theory, this should be worse than the C63 in terms of MPG. It should sit in between the Porsche and the Mercedes because it's obviously it's lugging around a lot more mass with a lot less power it's yeah and like i said it's more it's not aerodynamic at all really is it compared to the, the mercedes well i don't actually know that but that's my assumption because this is quite boxy and it's not very streamlined as the mercedes looks there is with all its curves but in theory this should be worse than the mercedes because of all the things going against it compared to the mercedes and also with its undeniably bigger engine the Mercedes has with a 6.2 litre compared to this more microscopic 4.4 litre V8. It, if science is correct then surely uh, this should be worse on MPG but I don't know if, if that actually will turn out to be the case. It's going to be really interesting, I can't wait to find out. 
who knew MPG could be so exciting? Maybe only it's me who gets excited over it, but we are in some nice territory now, some nice bendy parts, albeit quite rough. But when you've got Volvo suspension and underpinnings of a Volvo, 17 inch wheels, these bumps are nothing. Whilst we're talking about comfort, it's unbelievable. It's as smooth as a lake at dawn, just simply glides over any ob obstacle it just faces. This road is absolutely horrendous, but when I drive down the Mercedes, it's unbearable. When I drove down the Porsche, it was also quite unbearable. But in the Volvo, no, no problem at all. We're doing it with absolutely no problems whatsoever. Now, I'm not scared to go down these roads anymore. I can go at speed because I'm not afraid of going over any bumps because it won't buckle an alloy going over these bumps compared to the Mercedes or the Porsche would. Right, got some quite fun roads now. Let's give it a bit of welly. Such a brilliant soundtrack. Getting around these bends. Oh, dearie me, I don't feel too confident going around. Wow. It's not particularly fast once the car gets going, like when you, when you kick down. It's not that fast, but it's more than enough power that he needs because this car's not meant to be lightning quick, it's meant to be a luxury cruiser, not a bruiser. Turn right down here. All wheel drive, big full lock. Wow, <laughs> that was a bit playful, wasn't it? Normally I would not accelerate around a corner, well mid corner, because obviously it's not a sensible thing to do, but with this all-wheel drive, I feel a bit more confident. Sounds a bit stupid. But going around there, after kind of mid-corner accelerating, it kind of it dealt with it relatively well, which is actually quite surprising, because it's not the most dynamic in terms of handling. This is excellent, I love this. And the skies have opened up as well, look at it. It knew the Volvo was coming up today. That's why it's so beautiful outside. Now we're joining more of a main road. <sighs> really does get off the line very quickly, this car. It's one of its party pieces, I think. The way this car gets off the line initially is one of the most surprising things about this car. Well, there are many things, but that is one of them. And I'm in no doubt, well, you definitely would, if you put this on the line next to my C63, it would beat it off the line and probably stay there until about 20 miles per hour, maybe 30, and then the Mercedes would come sailing past. It's very, very handy especially this all-wheel drive system. I don't know how complex it is, but it's been, it's proven to be very, very good in wet weather like we had yesterday. It doesn't break traction. You put your foot down with the all-wheel drive system and there's no slip, it just goes. There's no, there's no slipping, there's no crabbing, there's only nothing. It just it simply gets up and goes. And that was cold and wet and windy weather. Might just put it in manual mode. Change the gears. It does have a bit of shove when you uh, have it in manual mode and put it in second gear and give it some go. It does put you back in your seat a little bit. Situation update. I am happy to announce the average MPG so far is 19.7 miles per gallon according to our computer. That is very respectable. We are now on some more pleasing and more eco-friendly roads for the Volvo. So the MPG is actually rapidly climbing right now and it probably only will do even more as we get towards our finish line because we are going to be joining a dual carriageway very soon. Something I actually wanted to ask before I forget is, obviously I'm going to be filling up the car, 
and I've only filled it up with 99 Ron from Tesco, the Tesco Momentum 99 Ron. So I wanted to ask you guys if there's any S80 V8 people watching this or just car enthusiasts in general, is it necessary for me to be filling this up with 99 Ron considering it's just a Volvo S80 V8? I don't know because obviously this is not a normal engine, it's a 4.4 litre V8 the Yamaha helped develop build it, build it. So it's, a, it's somewhat a performance engine. So would it be criminal to fill it up with the 95 Ron as opposed to the 99 Ron? I don't know if it's necessary to have the 99 Ron in this car, but I feel like I should. Because apparently it's better for the car. I'm not too clued up with the, um, the implications of how fuel works, but apparently the 99 Ron stuff is just better for your engine and longevity so I'd like to know what you guys think and is it advisable just to fill this up with the 99 or the 95 please do let me know in the comments but I regardless I probably will just stick to the 99 because apparently it gives you a bit of extra go a bit of juice a bit of extra for ponies which this car might need okay we're now approaching the dual carriageway before I be going to dual carriageway I want to have a bit more fun with the manual mode Give us a bit of a launch down the slip road. Here we go. Nothing by me. Uh, if you guys can hear a lot of wind noise, I do apologise, but that is because one of the seals on one of the wing mirrors is. Well, I'm missing. I don't know where it's gone, so I need to fix that. So the wind noise is quite bad here. You probably can hear it as well as I can, so apologies. Just to give you a quick update on the MPG whilst we're on a dual carriageway, we are actually doing 23 miles per gallon, which is quite unbelievable. I really didn't expect that. Um, and right now, 70 miles per hour, we are doing just a smidge over 2,000 revs. But anyway, I'll see you at the petrol station because that wind noise is probably really annoying you, so right, see you there. Righty, so here we are back at the petrol station where we were, I don't know how long ago it was, maybe half an hour, 40 minutes ago. I don't think we're actually going to be using much petrol as I thought we would. So guys, I'm now going to fill up and then I'll... Um, park up and then we'll gather the results from there. Okay everyone, the journey is now complete and I have filled up at the petrol station. So now it's time for me to relay all the figures to you and then we'll gather our results from there. Uh, I covered 22.6 miles like last time, which is quite fitting. Uh, I used 4.38 litres of fuel, which sounds quite promising. However, it had cost me £7.5p, which still is a lot of money. Um, and if any of you are wondering the price of fuel, that is £1.60.9, and that is the 99 Ron that I use. And compare that to last time with the Porsche, it was about £1.90.9. So we're making progress. Uh, so now all we need to do now really is get the trusty calculator I use online and then we'll find out results. So everyone, I've now got the MPG calculator out. So we need to put the distance in, which was 22.6 miles and the liters of fuel used was 4.38 miles. So if we calculate now, 23.46 miles per gallon. Blimey, that is... That's really good. Um, I am actually really shocked. I did not expect it to be that high. Wow. And when you compare it to the computer, it was also 23.5 miles per gallon. So they're literally near enough the same. 
that's genuinely shocking. I did not expect this to be more economical than the C63 by 6 MPG. I know the C63 is not an economical car of 6.2 litre naturally aspirated V8. But with all the things going against this car, with it having less gears, more weight, less power, probably less aerodynamic, I didn't expect it to be that much more economical than the Mercedes. Maybe I should redo the C63 test and try again to see if it's any closer to the Volvo, because I did not expect it to be that bad. If I was to do this in the long run, I reckon this could get way over 30 miles per gallon. I'm chuffed. This is an eco warrior. I love, I love this car. This is brilliant. It's full of surprises. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to leave that there. If there's anything Volvo related you want to see in the channel regarding the S80 V8, then please do comment down below and I'll try and film it for you. But other than that, please do give it a like and subscribe and that will go a very long way. Um, so thank you very much for watching and bye for now.